for this morning. And we come to you in a spirit of, of gratitude for all that we have to be grateful for and in the recognition and understanding that all that we have comes from you. Remind us, O oh Lord, that we are not nearly as in charge of and in control of our lives as we like to think. Knowing that it is you by the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells within us that controls our lives and our actions and our thoughts and anything good that comes to us or anything good that comes out of us is all from you. And we rejoice in that. We're looking forward to coming together this morning, O oh Lord, and entering into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise, and coming into the Holy of Holies and experiencing your presence among us this morning as we gather around this churchyard in our cars, our automobiles, and, and, and sitting under the trees and, and enjoying uh, our, our time with you. As we open up scripture today, Lord, I pray that you will reveal uh, uh, to your servant all that you have that I might be able to share with your sheep this morning. Uh, the eighth chapter beginning, beginning with verse one uh, down through about 11, and then I'm gonna to go to Matthew, and uh, we'll read some Matthew, uh, from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, some of what Jesus was telling and sharing, and, and we'll, we'll start with one and we'll go to the other, and we'll weave those in and see if it doesn't make more sense to us. Uh, uh, after we leave than, than maybe before when we got here. So here, the word of the Lord now as it comes to us, first of all, from Romans chapter 8. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation. Man, I want us to hone in on that. We preached about works righteousness last Sunday, and we talked about how we've been set free, how we've been set free by what Jesus has done for us where we don't have to worry about working our way into heaven. And when we slip and fall, so Paul tells us here in Romans is there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That would be us. Amen. Blow your horn if you're in Christ Jesus this morning. Blow your horn if you're in Christ Jesus this morning. If I don't hear another horn blow, I'm going to send some of you home. Okay, there you go. All right. <laughs> to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You see, we've come this morning to worship in truth and spirit, not to worship in the flesh, but to worship in truth and in spirit. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. It's what we talked about last week. We've been set free from works righteousness. We've been set free from sin and the fear of death. Amen? Amen. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin. God condemned sin. Listen to this. God condemns sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to what? Spirit. The Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh but those who live according to the Spirit the things of the Spirit. To be carnally minded to be carnally minded to have our minds set on the things of this world is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is in enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God nor indeed can be so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God now that's a powerful little statement right there it sounds really simple we'll come back to it in a few minutes but I want you to remember that those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, Paul tells us, but in the spirit. 
if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Does the Spirit of God dwell in you this morning? Let me hear it. Don't let paying attention. <laughs> and if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit of life uh, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. That's one of my favorite uh, scriptures that, that I recite quite often, that the same Spirit of Christ who lives and dwells within you, who raised Christ Jesus from the dead, uh, 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 lives and dwells within you and, and heals your mortal body. Amen. Now in Matthew, well listen to this, and let's see if we can't bring these together this morning. In Matthew, in the 13th chapter, I'm going to start out with the 18th verse. It says, this is the parable of the, of the, of the sower, the parable of the seed. You will remember this, but, but then he, Jesus is beginning to explain this parable, and listen to this. It says, hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root. We talked about roots. We talked about being planted by the water like a tree with our roots growing deep. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. And for what was sown among the thorns, listen to this, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of this world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. No condemnation. How many of us, let's be honest with ourselves, no need to raise your hand or toot your horn, but how many of us from time to time feel condemnation? We feel condemned. Condemnation is the expression of a very strong disapproval. Punishment, it has a punitive connotation. Condemnation. When we go to court for a moving violation and we stand there before the judge and he hits that gavel down and says guilty as charged, we're being condemned. If you murder somebody, you stand there and he hits that gavel and, and pronounces the, the judgment, you've been condemned to prison. Amen? Condemnation is a negative thing. It is punitive in its basic definition. So when we feel condemnation, Scripture tells us from Romans, Paul is saying that there is therefore now no condemnation. For those who love or, in, or, or, or who in, are in Christ Jesus. So there's no room in our lives for condemnation. Where, therefore, does condemnation come from? From the enemy. I don't know about you, but sometimes... Sometimes I feel like there's a little man, there's a little head sitting on my shoulder. Sometimes when, when, when I have faults or sometimes when, when I don't do something that is exactly godly, there's a little voice sitting on my shoulder telling me, well, say, I told you so. I told you you ain't no kind of Christian. Who in the world is going to listen to you, Sam? Who in the world said you could be a preacher? You, 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 you know better than, than, than this sinner than anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I, anybody, anybody can share that with me? If you don't, you're all telling a story. Because we're human. And the enemy's out there trying to fill us with condemnation. Condemnation. Because condemnation turns us away from God. Condemnation makes us withdraw 
from a relationship with God. Amen? Think about it for a minute. It pulls us away from God. That's not godly, is it? God's not in the business of driving us away from a relationship with him. My goodness gracious, he sent his son to die on the cross so that he might have and that we might be in right relationship one with another and with God. So anything that separates us or pulls us away from God is not a godly thing. Amen? Blow your horn. Amen? So how then, how then, church, are we reminded, are we reminded when maybe we slip? How many of us in here trying to live a, a godly life, but every now and again, you know, man, I, you know, we slip and fall, amen? So how are we reminded of that? How are we reminded of that that's godly? How are we reminded of that that draws us closer to God rather than, I can't see you, Sarah, rather than pushing us away from God? That's called conviction. Conviction. Conviction is what the Holy Spirit reminds us of is a, is a strong belief, a firm belief in something is conviction. And the Holy Spirit reminds us of our conviction to Christ Jesus. Amen? Oh, well, Sam, you, you know you shouldn't have said that. You know you shouldn't have said that about your neighbor. Sam, you know you, you shouldn't have acted that way and, and been so impatient there in the grocery store line. Or when that guy pulled in front of you going down the highway and, and you got all upset and, 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 and lost, your, lost your cool. Now, Sam, you know that's not right. Let's just repent of that right now and move forward. Woo! You see the difference? <coughs> Because Jesus died on the cross and took on his shoulders, his back, all of my sin and your sin and all of the sin of the world, we can simply go before our Father and say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. Ooh, and he says, well done, well done, son, well done. You're already forgiven. Just try not to let it happen again. Ooh, and that draws me closer to God. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? I want to get that straight. Con condemnation is of the enemy. Conviction is from God through the Holy Spirit. You see, I know people in church, I know people in the world who love to condemn with their, with their ratchet jawing. They love to talk about, oh man, did you see the preacher the other day? Oh my goodness, did you see the preacher? Did you see, did you, did you, oh my goodness gracious sakes. And we condemn one another to one another. I want to tell you something, brothers and sisters, that's worse than gossip. Because that's triangulation. That's the enemy triangulating us away from God. When we start condemning one another based on our own sense of righteousness and our own sense of judgment. And God says, that's not what I've called you to do. That's not what I've called you to be. I've called you to love one another. I'll take care of the conviction. I'll take care of whatever's going on in Preacher Sam's life. You don't need to worry about it. Man, I don't know about you, church, but that sets me free. I don't have to be meddling in your business all the time. <laughs> I've, got, <laughs> I've got enough of my own business to worry about. I don't need to be in yours. Amen. And you don't need to be in mine. And if you think there's something going on with your neighbor that doesn't just line up with your sense of, of righteousness and morality, you just stop for a minute and pray about it. And ask God by the power of the Holy Spirit to convict that person and or maybe convict me and let God do God's work unless you and me just love one another. Can I get an amen? Everybody blow your horn. 